Hi everybody and welcome to UK Diver. My name's Andy. I'm a BSAC Advanced Diver, Open Water Instructor and Dive Officer of Pontifract Scuba Club. And today I'm going to show you how to use one of these um, to analyse your nitrox. Okay, so um, what I've got is a Analox, it's not Analox, it's just me being childish, it's an Analox um, O2 something or other, but anyway, it's one of the more common nitrox analyzers or O2 analyzers that you're going to get in the UK. Um, so I use this because I mix my own gas, I'm trained to do that, um, but for most of you guys out there, you'll be going to a dive center and getting some nitrox mixed up and you need to test it to make sure that they've got it right. Um, now there are a few videos out on YouTube that show you how to test your um, nitrox um, and some in the UK and some um, guests from the US and they're all kind of right but they're not quite right okay so I'm going to show you today the definitive way of doing it the absolutely proper way of doing it and I'm also going to tell you about some things that you need to think about while you're at the dive center before you grab that cylinder of nitrox and uh, run off and go diving with it. So let me introduce you to this first. Okay so like I say this is a Analox analyzer very very common here in the UK. Um, this is my own personal one. Um, but this is what you're going to be presented with, I guess, in most cases when you go to a dive center and get your uh, gas tested. Now, this one's got its O2 saver in at the moment, which just protects the sensor because the sensor reacts with oxygen and it degrades over time. So if you don't seal it off, um, it's not going to last very long. So I normally come like this. You take your O2 protect it off, okay, and to do your test, you pop the little testing thing in and this is just the thing that you jam into your cylinder it's got a tiny little hole in it that lets the gas through uh, onto the sensor so you pop that on so that's it you're ready to go on the side of the unit there's a little power button now it is a power button and it's also a lock button and again on all the other videos on there nobody actually tells you about the lock feature i'm gonna because if you blend in your own mixes um, it's really handy but anyway, as you can see at the moment, and I have some close-ups of this, this is the unit's off, so the screen is off, okay? So the power button just switches it on. It switches off after so long. So if we switch it on, you'll see we've got a bit of a readout there, okay? And what a lot of the other channels will say, <clears throat> and kind of rightly, uh, and for those of you that have done your training, you'll know that air is 21% oxygen. So we set this to 21%. No, you can't do that, okay? Uh, you can do that, obviously, but then it's not gonna give you a correct reading, okay? This is a scientific piece of equipment, okay? It's a tester, and it doesn't work the same in all conditions, okay? So if you're in Egypt, this needs setting up different to when you're here in the UK. So when you buy one of these, or if you buy one secondhand, and it doesn't come with this, and I'm gonna put a picture of this up there, this is the Analox O2, E2, whatever it is, but it's an oxygen compensation chart for moisture in the atmosphere. Now, the reason for that is, is, is that moisture, water, is made of O2. So it reacts with the sensor. So the more moisture you've got in the air, the more O2 this is going to sense when you set it to 21%. So when you're setting it to 21%, it's not just that air, the, the free available oxygen in the air, so to speak, you're also measuring the moisture. So what you have to do is you have to adjust this by this. So it's basically a chart that covers temperature and relative humidity. And you might be saying to me, Andy, Christ, well, why do I check what the relative humidity is? Um, you know, you get that kind of stuff on the weather report. Well, you do, but you can also do this. Hey, Google, what's the relative humidity in Pontifract today? The humidity in Pontefract today is predicted to be 87%. Yeah, that was relatively easy, wasn't it? So 87%. So anybody who thinks that the UK is not a moist country um, really needs to think again, okay? It's wet here permanently. There is lots of moisture in the air, okay? So if we look at this chart here, 
Uh, we do have a 80%, but it's 87, so we'll base it on 90%, yeah? Um, I'm in my living room now, which is a comfortable 20 degrees. Okay, so at 20 degrees, there isn't a 20 degrees, so we'll go up to 21. So at near 90% humidity and 21%, uh, sorry, 21 degrees Celsius, yeah? We don't want to be setting this to 20.1, uh, 21%. What we actually need to be doing, according to the chart, is setting it to 20.4. Now, you might be thinking, well, Andy, that's only, you know, a few points worth of difference. When you get your nitrox, the target range, if you ask for 32%, is half a percent. Now, already, by failing to set this up correctly, you're already half a percent out, okay? Um, then if the dive center gives you half a percent out again, which is in where their tolerance, then you're a whole percentage point out. And that means that your MOD is gonna be affected. Now. Yes, I fully accept. You should not uh, use gas that is precisely to the MOD that you're going to. So if you're going to 30 meters, you don't want a gas that's, that's, that's at 1.4 at 30 meters. Give yourself a bit of breathing space. But really, you know, what's the point in doing this if you're not going to be as accurate as you can with it? So that's one way of adjusting this is with the chart. But say you haven't got the chart with you, what's your other options with this? Well. If we take a look down here, um, then what you can see is I've got my stage cylinder, which is the one I'm gonna test, okay? And then I've got my training cylinder. So that's the cylinder I used to teach with. And that's just got air in it. It's, you know, it only ever goes in the pool. It goes to you know, some inland sites, but it never has nitrox in it. It's, it's not O2 clean, it's not tested, so it's just air. So, and the, the thing about the compressed air is when you compress the air, Okay, again, for anybody who's done the compressor course, old news, but for those of you who haven't, one of the jobs of the compressor is to remove the moisture out of the air. So big deal in the UK, because again, we run about 85, 90% humidity here in the UK. So we really do need to extract that. So again, if we look at the chart, um, so that will have very, very little moisture in it. So 20 degrees or 21 degrees, at 10% humidity, again, we should be setting it to 20.8, okay? So much more closer to that 21%. So I would be much happier if you're just gonna think of things and go, right, I'm gonna set this to 21%. Don't calibrate it by just wafting it in the air like we do normally, <laughs> okay? Calibrate it by testing it off a cylinder of known compressed air with the, you know, that will be a lot less humid than, um, than the, the, the normal air, okay? And again, if you're gonna have it filled at a dive center, they should really be having some cylinders with just a bit of air in that you can just calibrate this to, and then you don't have to worry about relative humidity and all that kind, kind of stuff. Just test it off a cylinder of straight up air. Okay, so now we've set it up correctly. Let's actually have a look at how to do a test because again, I see a lot of people fluff this up really badly because um, they're just a bit gung-ho with the gas. All right, guys, so what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna calibrate it. I'm gonna show you how to calibrate it. Let me just wiggle this out of the way. And we'll go this one shot. Calibrate it using dry air, okay? So we know this is dry air because it's out of a compressor. So we're gonna turn the um, unit on. And I'm gonna calibrate it to start with down to 21. So as you can see there, look. 21%, but we know that's not 21% because that's in this moist air that's in my living room now and not dry air. Now, one of the other things I see is that people just, okay, that's way too much. You're gonna blast the crap out of the sensor. Now, I'll show you why now. Okay, so if I take off the testing bung and get the O2 bung, okay, so you can see there we're at 21 point, has it gone up to one? 21.1, yeah? Now, watch what happens when I put the ceiling bung in. Okay, you'll have seen that shoot up. Okay, because the more pressure you put on the sensor, the higher the reading is. So if you have gas blasting out of this, yeah, again, it's gonna affect that setting, okay? Because pressure affects it, so you can't have it blasting out. Okay, so you want it nice and slow. Now, it can be a bit fiddly, but let's see what we can get. There, so you can hear that. Can you hear that? Oh, it stopped. And lean in. Very, very slight. Now what you'll tend to find is these valves turn themselves off. So just a little flow like that. Get that, pop it in there. And then once that's flowing, now adjust 
to 20.8 and I'm going to press the button so that's locked that screen now look so you can see what it was coming out at okay and that's the great thing about the lock because it doesn't matter what you do with this now that will lock it just it just locks the screen yeah if I press the button again it'll unlock and it should read perhaps something else now who knows can't see there we are so 20.7 is what it's reading now so that's calibrated using dry air that we know is dry correctly okay so now we move over to the cylinder we want to test and we do exactly the same so again lean in let you have a listen that's the amount of gas you want coming out put this in let it stroll up okay if you want to come and have a look you can see it can you see the screen there we go so 47 Just turn the gas up a little bit more So as you see that's leveling out we'll press the lock there we are so that cylinder has got a 48.5 percent mix in it so that's it guys that's how to test your nitrox mix but the more astute of you may be thinking well actually andy there's a bit more of a problem here and you'd be right uh, because anybody who's had a air fill let alone nitrox fill will know that when you pick your cylinder up if you just had it done it is glowing it is uh, going to be nice and toasty nice and warm um, and it's uh, obviously not at room temperature so what does that mean well firstly it means that this is out because your temperature of the gas that you're testing is going to be wrong um, worse your mix is going to be thinner than what it's going to end up if that makes sense okay because hot gas okay doing a bit of uh, Boyle's law or whatever Dalton's law Dalton's law one one of the bloody laws anyway um, gas expands with heat so when it's nice and hot uh, it expands and it will be at one pressure so we've all had those fills where you know we've got it off the compressor it's at 230 bar we think oh that's a really nice fill by the time you jump in the water it's cooled down it's at 190. now what that means for a nitrox fill is that the O2 in there is mixing in this expanded gas so percentage wise of that volume it will be whatever 32 50 if it's a, if it's a deco gas whatever it is as that air cools the oxygen content will increase okay do your gas blending course you learn all the physics of this but that's what happens so as the as the gas cools your, your o2 mix goes up which means to get the right mix you might need to top your cylinder off again so this is not a five minute job at the dive center guys a nitrox mix um, if your center is saying hey i'll test that gas and your cylinder is glowing hot tell them to go do one okay sit down get them to make you a cup of coffee have a yak about diving trips let them try and sell you some kit but you need to make sure that that cylinder is at um, ambient temperature before you do your test because if you haven't got one of these at home and i wouldn't recommend dashing out and buy one they're expensive um, and if you're not diving nitrox regularly they're not really needed so i can't recommend you going out and buying one but if you've not got one at home then you're relying on that test uh, at the dive center to tell you what you're breathing and the chances are well i'm not there's no chances if that cylinder is red hot when you put it in your boot okay by the time you get home that test is going to be no use because um the the gas percentage will have changed because the air inside the cylinder will have shrunk meaning that the oxygen percentage has increased okay so i hope that makes sense guys okay so um I appreciate, as always, that Andy's videos on these topics are twice as long as everybody else's, um, but that's my take on it, and it's the full picture as far as I'm concerned, and I think all these other quick ones do you a bit of disservice, to be honest with you guys, because it's a bit more involved um, than just, you know, yeah, it's not an air fill. An air fill, yeah, you cram it in, get it up to the pressure, go in with it. Okay, you might have a, a slightly duff fill by the time you actually dive, but you're not hurting anything. But with nitrox and oxygen toxicity to worry about and all that kind of jazz um, just take your time with it it's not complicated but just take your time okay so that's it guys that's the video for today 
If you want to my around the world viewers, I hope you dive in um, and I hope wherever you are, the lockdown restrictions and, and things are safe enough for you to get out diving. If you're in the UK, uh, we are in week three of the six week lockdown or five, whatever it is, we're not even halfway through yet. So don't be diving, um, stay safe, um, stay home, uh, look after yourselves and the people around you. And uh, you know, after this lockdown, hopefully this is the last one and we can just get on with doing some diving. Um, like, subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. And um, other than that, guys, I will see you on the next tutorial video. Seems I can't go out diving. But anyway, um, yeah, hit the little notification bell. Make sure you don't miss anything. And uh, I will uh, uh, see you on the next one. See you later.